Welcome to Nino Speaks. I'm Nino de Verde Rosa. And of course, we have my co-host, who is AJ Dean. We have an incredible show, but all our shows are incredible, but not because of AJ and I, because of our guests. And they're all amazing. So let me take you over to AJ. AJ, would you like to introduce our guest? Oh my gosh, it's my great pleasure. Thank you so much, Ninon. I'm so excited. We have Patricia Chica here. She is an amazing award-winning filmmaker, and she is also part of Cheek, Cheek Art Productions, uh, as well as her Chi Energy, which is her wonderful philosophy of good positive vibrations to uplift the world and uh, filmmakers and actors and the film industry. We're going to talk to her about her new film, Montreal Girls. It is my great pleasure to welcome. Hello, Patricia. How are you? Hello, AJ. Hello, Ninon. It's such a great pleasure being here with you. So thank you yeah, for having me. Absolutely. You know, Patricia, I have the pleasure of, um, and I believe this is correct, um, AJ, that you showed me a couple of, of paintings and, and things that Patricia does. And, and I was absolutely amazed what you do. I mean, it's that's very intricate work um, that you do. How did you get into this business? Or did you always do it? I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, um, I produce and direct films, and I'm also a chi energy educator in the film and entertainment industry. So how I started, I've always been a storyteller. Uh, I remember when I was four, I was drawing uh, with uh, Crayolas, and uh, the nanny told me, it's getting late outside. I was in the backyard of the house, and it's getting late. You have to come in, we'll, you know. And, and I started crying because I wanted to oh, keep what drawing. <laughs> and she took the sheet out of my hands. No, I want to finish my drawing. And, and I knew at that moment being, you know, a child, a four year old, old girl that no one ever again will take away my passion from me. And that's awfully young to, that's awfully young to know that, that, to have that feeling at that age, but then but you were also doing it at that age, so it was uh, quite different. So, so I, I was not, I was kind of joking when I said you start at four because everybody starts singing and doing different things at four years old, five years old. Mm -hmm. I was joking, but it's a true story. You really did start. I did start that young, and I knew in the core of my being that I was a storyteller. I was going to be an artist. I was going to be somehow working in front or behind the cameras. And when I was about five, my mom took me to a kid's TV show and it was live on TV and we had to do different uh, tricks. And, you know, they, I, I was interviewed. I can't remember the details, but I do remember the feeling of being on set surrounded by lights and cameras and people around uh, telling me what to do or look over there, look over here. Wow. And it was so exciting yeah. And um, I, I grew up w believing that I was going to be an actress and uh, to perform in front of the camera. So I did some theater when I was 17 in uh, college. And then I realized, mm, you know, uh, I, I picked I up the camera behind the camera. Yeah. And I picked up the camera because the cameraman didn't show up when they when we were supposed to make a short. And I just discovered this new tool and it was so powerful <laughs> and I never looked back. I said, this is where I'm going. I have to be behind the camera because I kind of don't like to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's my love to tell the stories and not to be told how to be or how to act. I, yeah, so. but also, I, also <laughs> I believe, yeah, also I be, you know, I believe, I know, that in all films, it's a story. You have to have a start, the storyteller. I don't know how many people know this, but there's a big board, right? And yeah. you, it's the whole story is, is like, it's all written out in little cardboard things all over. And they take mm -hmm. it down and put it here and take it down and put it there. And it's yeah. like, and this is the story yeah. of the movie or, or whatever you're doing. But there's always a story to it. Is it much the same now as it used to be? Because I know with the internet and with all the computer stuff, is it done a little different now? Well, the techniques and the methods are different and they keep evolving yes. from era to era. But, you know, 
the essence of a story, it's always the same. And it's been for a millennium. It's been about reaching people's hearts and make them feel something so they can, it, it can trigger their imagination and hopefully inspire them to do better or to do something differently. So yes. storytelling, it's so powerful because when you're able to tell that story and, and it resonates with somebody else, this is when, where we can really change the world. Absolutely. Animated animation is, um, to me, that's very, very difficult and very, very hard because you have to have like these cartoon effects, but then you've got to have the people in the background, which are real people, Mm-hmm. Doing these strange different voices and things and, you know, making this animation, you know, putting it all together. That is such a hard thing to do. Is it as hard as, as I think it is or is it easier? Well, I work in drama with actors. So for, for animation, uh, I get, you know, there are so many softwares and techniques. Uh, I did the one animation film when I was 18 in college and we won the first award for it and I remember drawing every single frame and it was like 12 drawings per second and it was exciting because you had to create the movement of the character and and my character was running and being chased. So you had to have all these like a second by second by second that's like for, for, for one minute you got 60 drawings. Yes and uh, we had absolutely and we had to time it with the song because uh, we had a specific song and in we time it like, with the feet going and, yes. this thing and the movement and <laughs> I've often wondered how hard that is because you look at it you see it you love it and you sort of wow that's amazing but the actual behind the scenes of putting this all together is something completely different you've got to have patience of, a, of Joe Oh, yes. Uh, it takes a lot of patience. And, and that's why I'd rather work in uh, live action cinema, because <laughs> I can work that. with real people and actors. Yeah. And, and I love that exchange with other human beings, you know, to really go to the core of the emotion with um, performers. How do you, um, when you have an actor, you're a director as well, obviously, you've directed a lot of stuff. How do you um, get an actor to do it the way you visualize it, whereas they've got a way of visualizing it in a different way. And then you've got to get what what you want because this is what you need out of them. How do you manage that with Because I know you have to be very gentle with them because they can never be wrong because then they they go in depression. So you have to make sure they're always (laughs) up and happy. Absolutely. An actor is never wrong, first of all. So I make sure that they feel safe in my hands, on my sets, in my productions, and they can never be wrong because art cannot be wrong. However, there could be a different take on it or a different direction or different interpretation. And my method is I work with energy. I work with the energy centers and I do exercises with the actors. So we both resonate at the same frequency and we can align with the same vision, the same intention. And then it's up to them to absorb what my vision is and to make it their own, to embody it in their body, in their mind and allow it to flow and surrender to it. And once- Absolutely, because I I haven't heard of too many directors that actually get involved with their actors or or, or actresses, because I think you've got to definitely have an understanding with each other and also a kind of a love. And and it's not so much a sort of yes, no, yes, no. It's more of becoming friends very, very fast and knowing, you know, you're working with each other. So you've got to evolve yourself. It's like a love affair, but not a love affair but you've got to get everything out you want. That's very hard to do. Do the actors really try hard to do do what you want? Well, when I work with them, it has to feel like it's easy and playful. And, you know, I don't don't want them to feel it's hard because once you believe it's hard, it's going to get harder. So (laughs) to me... It's just to nurture them, to protect them and give them that safe space where they can experiment and improvise and be themselves. And we stretch the characters in rehearsal. We try different things. I give them permission to be free, 
within the space of the performance. Between action and cut, they are leading that scene. It's not me as the director. They are in charge and control of it. So when once they feel they can surrender to the process with trust, everything flows naturally and it's easy. Honestly, I, I've never felt as an actor struggle once we have gone through the process. Before the process, they might have some limitations or blockages or limiting beliefs or insecurities or fears or nerv nervosity. But once we, we break those down and- Those barriers feel, are broken down and you become yeah. kind of friends. You become friends, but at the same time, you're doing your job, they're doing your their job. And it's so wonderful when you turn around and you said, you know, once the, the camera starts to roll, it's now their thing, which it is. Yeah, 100%. it is. And you've got to give them that encouragement. You've got to give them. And I think once you reach, because I've done filming myself, not filming, but I've been an actress. And I know that the, when I'm comfortable, I did something yesterday, Monday, I did a, a commercial. Yeah. And the people I was working with made me feel so comfortable uh, and so much at ease that you just you would just work with them. It's, it's, and it makes it much easier for yes. the lines and the position and the whole thing. Whereas if you're working with somebody that's like a little bit off, you know, oh, <laughs> did I do it right? Did I <laughs> you're always protect, trying to sort of, you know, make sure you do it good. Do you get a I'm lot of that? Oh, yes. And I tell my actors, the moment you start working with me, judgment has to be completely removed yes. from anyone or anything, especially from yourself. Like there's no judgment coming out of me ever. There's always love, support and feedback. I, I love to call it feedback. Let me just give you this feedback and let's try this instead. Why don't we yeah. explore this other way? You yeah. know, I'd love, and, and oh, that's ask okay. AJ, that's a way of saying you didn't do it right. <laughs> that's, well, you, didn't, you didn't do it right, but you can't say that. <laughs> you can't, you've got to say, no. let's try it this way. Let's try it that way. And yes. uh, right. yeah. AJ, I know you want to ask a question. Go ahead. I love that. Thank you for explaining that, Nina. And yes, it's a genteel way of um, cr constructive criticism. Is that right? And to correct yes. it. I, I don't like the word criticism. I, I love the way this is feedback. It's pure observational, non-judgmental yeah. feedback. In this take, I did not feel that you were struggling with this situation. So let's go and explore even more of that. And, and working with energy, you don't even have to speak the words. You speak uh, colors or a certain uh, emotion or just trigger their imagination so they tap into that energy of the emotion we want to convey on camera. Absolutely. What a welcoming and comfortable environment you give your uh, crew and actors. That is amazing, Patricia. My question to you is, can you tell us a little bit about this exciting motion picture, Montreal Girls, that you are, are creating and developing. It is such a wonderful movie with a great story. I'd love you to share a little bit about it. Could you please? Absolutely. Montreal Girls is my debut dramatic feature. And it's the first feature ever made with the method that I love to use uh, involving energy, chi energy. And the story is about a young Middle Eastern foreign student who goes to Montreal to study medicine because that is what his father wants him to become, a doctor. And once he gets to Montreal, he meets with two Montreal girls who will challenge his perceptions and reveal him to his destiny, which is to become a poet and follow his heart. It's an uplifting, feel good, coming of age drama. And um, I'm very proud of it. And I'm going to uh, be presenting it in front of all the European buyers, sales agents, distributors, and festival programmers next month. And it's been selected among the six narrative features to be part of this program uh, at US In Progress. Oh, wonderful. One big thing, did he become a poet? Well, uh, of course he did because it's a feel good movie, but in, not in the way that we think he would. So that's the little twist at the end that you should watch the movie to discover. Absolutely. And is it out yet or are you waiting before uh, until you get this after this, um, what is it, a, a festival you're in? Yes, uh, it's, a, it's a buyer's showcase. It's not a film festival. I'm still in okay. post-production 
putting the final touches of, of the film. And um, uh, this uh, will determine who in Europe will be distributing the film uh, in theaters, platforms, broadcasters, etc. Absolutely. You, so you haven't brought it out yet because it's not finished. It's not finished yet, no. but very soon. Very in, soon. The, in 2022, it will be released. Oh, OK. And how long did it take you to get this whole whole um, movie? Because it's a movie, right? This yes. whole movie together from like, from writing it all the way to, to the end to. to it, it, it was a long journey, to be honest with you, because um, my co-writer, Kamal John Iskander, who is a phenomenal award winning writer, and I uh, collaborated for many years on the script, but never really polishing to, to the point where it was ready for production. Mm -hmm. We were going back on and off and I moved to LA in 2014 and we were neighbors on the same street and we started collaborating even more once I moved there because we were you know, always together um, in the same neighborhood. So we went to cafes and discussed the story, but it's only when I got selected at the TIFF Filmmaker Lab during the uh, Toronto International Film Festival with this script that uh, everything started falling into place and the financiers, uh, the budget, distribution all came together very fast after that. And then COVID hit. So we had to stop everything. And oh, well, uh, like everybody, <laughs> we all had this COVID thing. It's like, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. But, you know, these things happen. And I, I often think, like, I look, think about the COVID and think the only problem I have, it was worldwide, but I think it was something to kind of sort us all out. And so I'm, I look at it in more of a positive way, that you know, collecting ourselves and coming back and realizing who we all are and, and staying at home and, going out and wearing all these masks and doing all this stuff. And you can be in a restaurant, you can sit down and not wear a mask, but you can mm -hmm. stand up and you've got to wear a mask. I haven't worked that one out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I quite don't know, up here, the air is different than down here. So I don't quite understand that. But I take it um, as a, an experience that we've all gone through. And I think it's um, kind of, uh, we've stepped up a little bit of who are we and what are we and what do we want? You find Absolutely. That Absolutely. And, you know, for me, COVID wasn't really uh, like a problem uh, or yeah. a ch challenge. It was more challenging me to rewrite the script and find solutions. And how can I convey the intimacy of these characters when they couldn't be in the same scene, you know, uh, in a close distance? So finding ways to tell the story that's still emotional and heartfelt and intimate with all those limitations that COVID brought. For yeah, producers. but it didn't limit you, it didn't limit me. In fact, if anything, if it hadn't been for COVID, I don't even know if I would be doing this show. I started this show, I've had Ninon Speaks for years, since 2005, but it's always been a private entity. And it's always, I've had people come to me and everything else, but never been on, on television or the internet. And then I met AJ and then we kind of talked and we got it together and I said, well, why don't we, you know, why don't we do a show? And that's how we started, you know, so I have to thank COVID actually for yes. a lot of stuff because otherwise you wouldn't have this. Uh, it's too. incredible. Huh? We have to pivot and we have to find ways to go through every situation with, uh, you know, a lot of enthusiasm. Because Absolutely. That's so, what how you, so what are you doing now? Well, I'm uh, ve being very productive. I'm preparing a TV series. I have a writer's room. It's called Soleil and Luna and very exciting times. Uh, we have the pilot episode. We have a broadcaster in Canada that is supporting us and uh, just going through the process of finishing all the episode scripts and also working on my second feature, my sophomore film called uh, Brother Men. And I have a wonderful team of producers and writer, and it's going really well. We, we have attached an actor that it's, uh, I cannot mention yet because there's a press release that will be um, sent, but he's a very well-known actor and so exciting, you know, to, to be in this uh, flow of creativity. It sounds wonderful. Have you ever heard of Fearless Films? A company in Canada called Fearless Films? 
Uh, no, I, I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, they're, they're on the stock exchange. Oh, okay. <laughs> so no, that's quite, great. Yeah, they're quite big and they've got quite a few um, well-known actors and, and people. Um, go ahead, um, AJ, you're, you're throthing at the mouth. You want to <laughs> say something? <laughs> I, I, first of all, I wanted to, wanted to congratulate mm -hmm. Patricia for all of the wonderful things that are happening. And um, I would like to ask you, Patricia, how can you inspire the younger generation, the ones that haven't even started, but it's their dream to be a filmmaker and director like you? What would you say to them? I would say find why you want to tell stories, why you want to make movies. Why do you want to be in front of the camera or behind the camera? And how many people will your work affect? The more people you affect and you impact, you inspire, you transform, mm. you empower, the more successful you're going to be. And do it with your heart, do it with passion, because mm -hmm. it takes a while to put a movie together. You know, there's a journey you have to go through, a lot of rejections, but rejections are badges of honor. Rejections is simply feedback that you are not ready yet, or that it's not a match with the person that you're asking for financing or for a green light or for approval from, it's just not a match yet. And just keep working at it, perfecting your craft. Well, it's like an exam, isn't it? You know, you go through, you get the first one done and you might not be as perfect as you wanted to be. So then you go to the next one. And it's funny um, how we all learn by our mistakes. We don't learn oh by the good things we do. We <laughs> learn by our mistakes, which is actually the only way you can learn when you think about it, because if everything's right, then you don't have to do anything about it. So I think criticism is really um, great. Personally, I think it's nice. I love people say, well, you know, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? I happen to like it because you sometimes don't see yourself as what you are and you think it's great and it's not. And somebody else's perspective of what it is um, I think it's great. I think for the, I used to have a show for the younger generation. We used to teach them and, you know, how, how to sort of, you know, the world is not that easy out there. You're not always right. You know, yeah. you have to, it's not like an exam, you know, you've got an a, a, a B, C. <laughs> it's, it's harder than that. Do you I'm, write sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, Ninon. We have to start wrapping it up. Oh, okay. So listen, so, um, Patricia, how do we get, how, how can anybody get hold of you? Yes, well, I'm all over the internet. Google my name. My website is patriciachica.com. I can help you uh, refine and perfect your storytelling through publicity, feedback on your scripts or your uh, rough cuts. So you can contact me uh, also on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Patricia Chica, and uh, that's what I do. So I would love to help as many people as possible, always with the twist of energy in uh, what I do. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank everybody out there for watching um, Ninon Speaks. And of course, our guest has given us a lot of information um, for the younger generation, for what she's doing and how she's doing it. And the reason I asked her how long did it, this film take is because if you think it takes six months, some of them can, if it's a short or it's, a, you know, it's not that long. But when you're really, really into it, you can take 10 years writing a script. So don't be worried out there if you haven't got it right the first time. They don't all take 10 years, but it, it takes a long time. It does take a long time. So you have to have patience. Um, perfection is really cool, I believe. Is, isn't it perfection right, Patricia? Uh, well, it's about who you surround yourself with. So find oh. mentors, find coaches, find teachers, people who can accelerate the process for you because this is where you are you have an idea and this is where you want to go and yes. just reduce that Absolutely. time by doing each step with uh, the there's a science to to getting results and the best way to achieve them faster is to surround yourself with a team that who has already done it. It has your backing. Got to go. Yes, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, we've got to wind the show up, Patricia. Thank you so much for being our guest. Thank absolutely you so amazing. Much. AJ, you are always amazing. AJ is also my producer and puts everything together. And without her, nothing happens. And so I want to thank everybody out there for watching Neon Speaks. You all take care. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.